your own deck with Ursula Camille. And this is The Triage Room. The Triage Room is a podcast that encourages and empowers listeners to overcome obstacles of pain. Pain is the physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. When we describe the type of pain we're having, we're really describing the symptoms. Once we identify the symptoms, then we can deal with the roots. Welcome to The Triage Room. You're now on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is the triage room. Today's topic, restitution. Let's take a look at 2 Kings chapter 8, starting at verse 1, going down to verse 6. Then spake Elijah unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou in thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine. And it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee all the great things that Elijah hath done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son whom Elijah restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. So here we have this woman. She was a great woman. She was a woman of wealth. And she came back after this famine to request to the king for her property, her house, and her land. She obeyed what prophet Elijah told her to leave because a famine was coming. It's going to be seven years to go somewhere else. She obeyed. And at the end of the famine, she came back. And when she came back, there's others occupying her property, occupying her land. So she went to the king to get what was hers back. But little did she know, there was a conversation happening between the servant of of the man of God. Gehazi was having a conversation with the king. And the king wanted to know all the great things that the prophet Elijah had done. So Gehazi was explaining, and as as he's speaking, she comes up. So here's the evidence of what Gehazi is telling the king. So prior to all of this happening, some of the, the events that happened prior to this time, this woman had built this room on her house, and she built it for the prophet to, to stay there. And during that time, he wanted to know what could he do for her, she, you know, she was good. She didn't want anything. And then his servant, Gehazi, noticed, okay, she doesn't have a child. So then the prophet Elijah spoke that over into her life. And she ended up having a son. And after having her son, the son grew, you know, was still a little boy, but he was a little bit older over time. So the son was out in the field with the father and, you know, his head was hurting. He went back to his mother and he ended up dying. And so the prophet Elijah ended up restoring, bringing him back to life. So all of these events happened till now, you know, the prophet told her to go away somewhere for seven years because a famine was coming. She did that, came back, and she's like, you know, I want my land, I want my house back. And so the king, because he's talking to Gehazi, and Gehazi's giving him the great thing, you know, that the prophet Elijah had done, and she comes up. So now here's who is the topic of discussion. So the king says, yes, you know, give her all her, her property back. Plus, you know, the rent payments. So not only did she get her house and her fields back, there's also seven years of payment. There's also rental payment for the use of the fields over this time. So what seemed to be a setback could be a setback in someone else's eyes, depending on how they look at it. Like, okay, she had this child and during this time she had this child, the child died and then the prophet had to, you know, the child came back to life. He restored his life. So now here we are that played into the king inquiring about the great things that the prophet Elijah had done. 
So now she's off somewhere for seven years, comes back. And it's like she hasn't even skipped a beat because she's getting back what belongs to her along with payment. Not only the house, not only the land, but also payment. She obeyed what the prophet told her. She comes back. Now this topic of discussion as to tell me the great things the prophet has done. And she's in this conversation, her and her son. And it's like perfect timing, perfect timing for there's no, I got to prove that it's mine. There's no, I got to stand before you and, and, and just continue to beg and plead. No, she made a request known and it's honored because here's somebody that's already telling her story prior to her coming. And one may ask, you know, well, why would one have to go through all of this? Sometimes we can experience things in life and it could be heavy things that we don't understand why, but the Lord knew a famine was coming down the road, down the pipeline, but she was taken care of. She obeyed the instructions of prophet Elijah, went somewhere else. And then when the famine was over, she came back, but she didn't come back to nothing. She came back, got what was hers. And then some got payment. Not only the house, not only the fields, but the rental payment for how the fields, what was done during that time over that seven year period. So I encourage you, whatever situation you may find yourself in, however the circumstances are, yes, some things seem more heavy than others. And it seems like, wow, wow, what is this right here? But God already knew what was down the pipeline. He already knew what was coming at the beginning, going back to the story at the beginning of how all of this manifested. This woman was married, her and her husband, it was just the two of them. And she wanted to build a room for the prophet on her home. Act of kindness. She didn't, wasn't looking for anything. She was a woman of wealth. She just wanted to, to do this for the prophet. And in return, she ended up getting a son. She was blessed to have a son. And even when what happened to her son happened, his life was restored. So she had her son. She went on, she obeyed what the prophet spoke. Gone seven years to another land, came back and still got what was hers in return. Got her house back, got a field back, and then received rental payment for the seven years she was gone. And here's my moment of transparency. For the last few days, since about maybe last week sometime, you know, the Lord put in my spirit the word restitution. And restitution, it means the restoration of something stolen or lost back to the proper owner. It can also be defined as the recompense for injury or loss by the person responsible for the injury or loss. So I began to ponder on that word restitution. So compensation or repayment, restoring back something that was taken, that was stolen, that was lost to the proper owner. So it put me in a place of expectation, not false expectation, but expectation because God put the word in my spirit. So now I'm in a place of expecting okay lord you put the word restitution in my spirit for a reason so now i await for the things that i know that belong to me the things that i know that i may have done without for a season the things that i know and i've experienced and just like the woman that had to leave for a time for a period of time because she went to another land because of the famine that was coming she listened to the instruction that was given and when she returned, she didn't skip a beat. So I wait in great expectation, understanding that some things happen in life and it doesn't make sense at the time that you're going through it. But just because it doesn't make sense does not mean that God does not have a greater plan, that the things that God has for us, plans for good, not of evil, that the things that God, you know, the way he does things, the way he orchestrates things, we may not get it. We may not understand why we're going through it while we're the ones enduring the process. But as this example of the Shunammite woman who, you know, she had to leave what was familiar to her and return and get back what's hers and then some restitution, what's yours being restored. So if you've been frustrated, if you've been wondering, what is this? You know, look at the example of the Shunammite woman to see, yes, she went through some things. Yes. Even though what she did not ask for, it was blessed to her. She was given a son. And even her son's life was restored. And as time went on, she was given instruction and she went and did what the prophet Elijah said and come back and her, her home is being occupied, land is being occupied. And she went, she got everything that belonged to her and rental payment for the time, for the years. So I encourage you that whatever it is, 
whatever it is that you know but rightfully belongs to you, whatever journey you've been on, and every time you look up, it seems like it's something, and it all started out with a, a kind act, an act of kindness, you weren't looking to go on a journey of what is this? I mean, I'm, the extra, having to endure some things. But don't you know that act of kindness, just like the Shunammite woman set her up for a bigger blessing? A conversation happening that the timing, everything is about the perfect timing. The king wanted to hear about the great things, the great works of Elijah. And then there was one given the story, given the history. And then she's coming at the right time as evidence of what's being told to the king. So when she makes her request, the king's prepared to, to honor her request because she showing up at the right time is proof of what Elijah did in her life. Sometimes there are things that happen in our lives. Yes, we're the ones going through it. Yes, we're the ones dealing with it. But at the right time, it can be used. It will be used for something greater. And this was a time for restitution to happen. When she showed up at that right time, restitution happened. What was hers was restored. So I encourage you, don't lose hope. Be in expectation for what is rightfully yours to be given back to you. And there may be a conversation that is happening that you know not of. So at the right time, whenever you show up, the answer is yes. And what is yours is given to you. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to say thank you. Lord, I thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that those that have been in a situation where maybe they've experienced some of the similar things as this Shunammite woman had experienced, that, Lord, they don't lose hope, understanding that whatever it is that belongs to them that may have been taken for a season, a short period of time, that those things will be restored, that those things will be given back, back with payment, and that every experience that they have found themselves involved in, every experience that they've had to face, every hill they had to climb, every obstacle that they had to overcome, that there is a set time for restitution. There is a set time for those things that belong to them to be given to them, that they continue to keep their trust in you, and know that everything will work out for their good. And that there's a, a reason, a purpose for the things that we go through. There's a reason, there's a purpose. And you know, Lord, the plans that you have for us. I ask you, Lord, to just continue to keep a hedge of protection around them. And that they will not lose hope and to keep moving forward. Lord, I thank you, I praise you, and I glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You all be blessed. Thank you for joining me on deck in the triage room. To get the music you hear in this podcast or to stay connected, visit my website, UrsulaCamille.com. That's U-R-S-E-L-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-E.com. Sign up on my email list, get merch and more. Have an area of pain you want to address in the triage room? Send your email to thetriageroom at gmail.com. I'm your host, Ursula Camille, signing off. Be blessed. One touch and your life will change. Did you know that Jesus reigns? One touch and your life will change.